in bed. It's better than you think. It's better than you think. It's, it's, it's passionate, essentially. Very, very passionate. I love going to a tea bag. I think I should go without saying the tea bag I'm talking to here is a GM free fair trade tea bag. Unbleached, looks like it's been used once before, but it hasn't. <laughs> Such as this served in Willow restaurant. Actually, I should tell you that. I'm sorry, I'm going to go on a bit, but I have to tell you about Willow restaurant, a uh, whole food vegetarian restaurant in Tottenham. I used to live in a first floor flat directly opposite this, this vegetarian restaurant. And I was, I'm, it's a really weird thing, man, I get these flashbacks to it. I was walking up the top of Side Street, going past, going past uh, the restaurant, there's two men in there, hugging. And it's kind of interesting in my mind now, because uh, they've got those kind of baggy pattern trousers, and there's a little berry beside them on the table, like a little floppy dog bowl. And uh, they had quite tight designer stubble on the face of it, one of them ponytail, and uh, this hug. And I thought, oh, two men hugging, yeah. And I went to the post office, and about 10 minutes in, they came back the same way, and they're still there. 10 minutes on. In the same way, the same hug, and I oh, long hug, interesting. I went down to the bank. And about 15 minutes down, in 90 years ago, what's the other side if you know it? Came back up the same way, they're still there. Same men, same hug, but we're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> I thought, is this a sponsored hug for charity? <laughs> is this fear of showing fear of intimacy? What's going on here? I thought, just leave it, just leave it. I took the to my flat, potted about a bit, you know, did a bit of Tai Chi, a <laughs> little bit of Tai Ping as well. <laughs> Wandered over to the window, looked out, they're still there, there's half an hour in the line. Actually, I can't really explain the hysteria being to go up and actually began to panic a little bit. Didn't know what to do, so I phoned my friend Chris and said, Chris, I don't know what to do, there's two men in a restaurant hugging. He said, so. I said, Chris, they've been there for over half an hour. I'm beginning to panic. He said, Matt, Chris, Matt, it's their hug. All right? I said, okay, it's definitely, but it's your fear. I said, okay, it's their hug. So I said, what am I going to do? Chris, he said, Matt, I want you to go down and face your fear. Do you think you can do that? I said, Chris, I think I can do that. So I went down to one of the restaurants to face the fear that was coming up from there. I found I wasn't the only person affected by this hug. Quite a lot of people were kind of inch edging past them to get out of the restaurant and dropping sort of 10p or 20p <laughs> into the barrier, treating it like kind of indoor busking. Just to kind of of things like Other people were complaining to the management saying that this is a vegetarian restaurant, it's quite a meaty hug, we don't feel comfortable with this. But the management said it was their policy to support same sex hugs with no time limit. And the people had a problem with that. What were they doing in a vegetarian whole food restaurant in Thomas in the first place? Which is a good point. But other people affected by the hug actually formed a self help group in the back room. <laughs> And they were sitting around in a circle sharing things that were coming up, and that's obviously the place for me. So I went around to the back room. It was lovely, we all sat in a circle, and I, you know, I shared the feelings of fear that were coming up, and I felt accepted by the group. It was a nice feeling. And uh, as another man there saying, it's particularly difficult for him because his father had only ever shown affection to him when they were underwater. <laughs> and he was having breathing difficulties. He'd go, ooh, 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 ooh. Understandable. And I thought, okay, this is very valuable and instructive, but what about the huggers? Who's asking them how they feel? So I went through, I thought, get my courage in my hand, and I approached the two men. The one facing me, his eyes closed. And I went up to him and I said, Excuse me, are you okay? And he opened his eyes, and I could see in his eyes relief, exhaustion, and gratitude. And I lip read rather than heard the word hell. <laughs> and it turned out it wasn't a sponsored hug for charity, it wasn't fear of showing fear of intimacy, but their hug was so snug, and the follicle spacing ratios on their faces were so exactly matched, they had become Velcro together. And you could, we, couldn't just, we couldn't just rip them apart, because if we'd done that, one of them would have lost face. So, so what we had to do, we had to get one of those pipettes filled with olive oil, and we had to drizzle, drizzle it down between them, just to soften that kind of tangled fuzz, and ever so gently, very gently, praise them apart. It was very, very beautiful, very moving. All of us were very open, you know, by the end. And on the way home, that very moving experience, I actually had a vision of Aral Dighty, <laughs> the god of male bonding. <laughs> That restaurant's where the tea bag is, anyway. <laughs>